Hello, I'm Mark Baer. Welcome to the Your Town Television Program. My guest today, Mark Del Piero. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thank it, you for having so, me today. So, Mark's going to be a future host of, of this show, so I'm excited to have him here. And uh, you were born and raised here. Uh, let's talk a little about who you are and growing up here. Thanks very much. Um, first of all, thank you for having me this morning. Um, yeah, I'm, um, I'm a lifetime resident of Monterey County. I, I was uh, born and raised here. I went to local schools. Um, I was on the County Planning Commission uh, when I was 24 and on the Board of Supervisors when I was 26. And I've been a lawyer uh, here in Monterey County for a long time. And now uh, I serve on a variety of nonprofit boards, one of which is the Monterey History and Art Association. So we were on the Monterey History and Art Association together. And we both have strong feelings here that history matters. Uh, our local history matters uh, in, immensely in informing us who we are and, and charting our course forward. And um, you've been, uh, in particular, someone who's really worked hard to keep the traditions and the history uh, alive here. Monterey County is a rare and, and special place in the state of California. It really is, both from a from the standpoint of, of uh, location and, and uh, landscape and scenery, but more importantly, I think, from the standpoint of historical context. Um, some of the most significant events um, between 1770 and 1850 in the state of California took place here in Monterey. Uh, the first state constitution got signed here. Um, the uh, the uh, historic buildings that we have here are the sites of, of a number of, of major events uh, in the early history of our state. Uh, Monterey was visited by a variety of, of really significant um, individuals uh, of historic importance, both in the 19th and the 20th century. Um, and it's that history that, uh, in part, Monterey History and Art Association is trying to not only preserve and enhance but also share not only with uh, our residents here in Monterey County, but with residents throughout California and, and the rest of the country. So uh, the History and Arts Association is, uh, I, I believe, founded in the 30s? 1931. 1931. And it was founded by local people here who recognized that absent an organization that uh, was proactive, uh, a lot of the historic buildings uh, that uh, then were pretty common here in Monterey uh, were going to be lost uh, because of, of either a lack of maintenance or misuse. Um, a group of individuals came together in the early 1930s and in cooperation with the state of California set about uh, acquiring title to those uh, properties and uh, developing the funding programs uh, to not only uh, preserve them but to restore them so that they can be enjoyed by people even today in the 21st century. So, so over, over the years, the, um, the buildings have been saved and, re and restored and, and looked after. And then the uh, history itself has been preserved and the traditions have been served. I'm thinking like, like La Marianda, uh, still going strong after all these years. Uh, uh, the, the La Marianda is, is the uh, birthday party for the city of Monterey. It takes place on the first Saturday of June every year. Um, I've uh, only missed one since 1976. Um, and uh, it's a great event. It celebrates uh, the, the founding of, of Monterey. It celebrates uh, all of those institutions that historically were significant here in Monterey. And it gives everybody the opportunity to, um, to acknowledge and, and recognize um, how important Monterey is within the context of the history of the state of California. We've had a, a large number of, of dignitaries over the better part of the last six or seven decades uh, show up at that event. Um, governors, lieutenant governors, state senators, uh, U.S. senators, uh, representatives of every branch of the military that you can imagine, um, elected officials from all types of municipalities uh, throughout uh, Monterey County, as well as uh, throughout the state of California. Authors, artists, um, a whole variety of people who have uh, 
created the fabric of, of the historic traditions that we it's have here. Certainly Panetta's father and son. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Um, every year uh, we find out whether or not Leon and, and uh, Jimmy's uh, barbecue skills continue to, to be uh, sustainable. So to father and son, this is um, ag again one of the issues in a, in a small community is uh, continuing the life of, a, of, of an organization and passing it down generationally. And uh, it, it's, it's, a, uh, it, it's an issue for Monterey History and Art Association, and it's an, it's an issue for um, all of our long-lived organizations here. And how, how do you um, foresee kind of, what's the strategy for that? The, the strategy is to develop an appreciation for uh, the context in which Monterey County finds itself in our history um, uh, and within our state in younger generations. And part of that is sharing with young people uh, exactly what um, the history of, the, of uh, the Monterey Peninsula and Monterey County is all about. If, if you uh, give a student a copy of a novel by Robert Louis Stevenson, they may read the novel and, and, and understand that it's a good story. But when they understand that Robert Louis Stevenson was here on the Monterey Peninsula and that took uh, his, some of his experiences here on the peninsula and incorporated them into some of the best fiction of the 19th century, then it becomes meaningful to, to a student in the 21st century. Same is true in terms of fo photographs by Ansel Adams. If a student sees the magnificent photographs of Ansel Adams uh, that he took uh, throughout the state of California, some of which here were taken here on the peninsula, and they recognize those for the art that they are. It's one thing. When they understand that Ansel was a well-known figure here on the Monterey Peninsula uh, who participated in a variety of, of social activities and nonprofit activities, uh, then they understand that not only uh, can things like uh, greatness in art be realized in, on an individual level, but also on a community level as well. And that's, that's what Monterey History and Art Association really tries to do. We try to demonstrate from our history and those people that have, have come before us exactly what we hope future generations will not only appreciate, but aspire to. Yes. and. Uh, on this, I, I want to give a shout out to uh, our, both our friend Ann Burke, who has recently passed away, whose parents were founding members of History Art Association. But she started the uh, for the La Miranda the uh, La Niña's the the children's program. What a what a wonderful yeah. woman she was! What a wonderful and woman she was! She started the program for children yes. expressly uh, to try and 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 get them actively involved in the La Miranda uh, event. Um, uh, she actually worked with my wife um, uh, for a long time, and, and Anne was a, a kind and, and wonderful person who recognized the importance of sharing generationally the information and the heritage of, of the Monterey Peninsula. And, and her efforts will continue to live on long past, uh, long past her uh, because uh, the things that she recognized were important to be done are going to continue to be done uh, both on behalf of the Monterey History and Art Association and also in her name. Great. And so um, hopefully um, o over, over the months to come, you're going to be, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, we, we're both big fans of, for instance, Tim Thomas. Uh, you know, we're, uh, I'm a big fan of Michael Hemp. Uh, our local historians, I, who I want to... Uh, Tim, is, Tim is a great guy. Yeah. Uh, a brilliant, so he's a brilliant guy. He's a great guy. And he's, the, he's one of the most rare and unique storytellers anybody could possibly yeah. imagine. So I'm, I'm very looking forward to them uh, being at this table. And, uh, you know, hi history um, is past, present, and future. It's a living thing. It's, it's not a dusty thing in, in textbooks. And, and the personalities are... You, you know, there's big personalities out there that uh, there are. you know there there's life, and so uh, you know some. Of, let's talk about some of the the, the personalities that 
you know have excited you over the years? Oh well, I, I, as I said, I knew Ansel. Um, yeah. I, I knew him uh, in the early 1980s when I was on the board of supervisors, and and uh, uh, we sat in a number of meetings together, uh, talking about the preparation of the Big Sur Local Coastal Plan that remains in full force and effect, and and how we were going to preserve those those rare if not unique environmental and, and, and uh, ecological resources that are um, well known to everybody here in Monterey County uh, and that are worth preserving. Um, he was, he recognized that the natural beauty that he photographed was, um, was uh, at risk uh, unless there were strong and sustained preservation efforts. And he, he basically put his money where his mouth is. Uh, he, he was committed to long-term environmental preservation here in Monterey County. Um, I've also had the opportunity to, to meet a whole variety of other characters. Some of them were well known, and some of them uh, maybe not so well known. Um, after a, a big tragedy in 1989, when we had the the uh, the, the Loma Prieta earthquake, um, a good friend of mine who's uh, sadly passed away, former county supervisor Sam Karras, and uh, uh, another uh, friend of mine, uh, former mayor. Uh, Clint Eastwood to Carmel, uh, the three of us uh, put together a fundraising program to help those individuals who had lost their homes during the course of that a, a, a massive earthquake, uh, particularly in North Monterey County, which is where I was born and raised. Those types of opportunities demonstrate that um, some of the most famous people in our county and some of the least famous people of our county uh, come together during times of need. Uh, when there are clearly recognized goals that we need to achieve and achieve those goals in remarkable fashion. And um, it's, it's those kinds of stories that, that need to be perpetuated uh, and it's that kind of civic commitment that needs to, needs to be demonstrated uh, on an ongoing basis here on the peninsula. Well, we live in a um, remarkable place in the terms that there's small town life, you get to know people, they're your neighbors, they're your friends, your, your, your leaders are accessible. Um, the, the, um, the physical beauty looks much the same as it had for the people of the past. So it's a, if, if they came back, it's still a recognizable place. Mm -hmm. There's a feeling here that things tend to get better over time, not, not degrade, which is a, which is a, a wonderful thing. And um, you have the sense that we're a place in the world as well as a small town, and having those two things is is, is really special. How do you see our our global place? I, I think I think it's it's important to understand that um, the Monterey Peninsula, and particularly the the city of Monterey, but the Monterey Peninsula uh, has been very lucky. Um, there have been um, a number of elected officials who have recognized the importance of the preservation of our environmental resources and our history and the art that all of us on the peninsula recognize and, and, and appreciate. Um, individuals like, like uh, Peter Canelio, uh, who helped uh, with the massive redevelopment of downtown Monterey when downtown Monterey was not a very pretty place. Um, uh, individuals like uh, uh, Mayor Dan Albert, uh, who uh, sustained um, the effort initiated by uh, by Peter and who carried through on a variety of projects. Um, th those types of folks are uh, not only um, uh, good examples of local elected officials, but also good examples of people who have r real appreciations for what's important in a community and what can sustain um, uh, the vitality of a community over a long term. And that's how, that's how the peninsula has been able to, to be preserved in the fashion that you're describing, by having individuals, not all, but, but some individuals with great talent who have been uh, remarkable caretakers. And, uh, and right now, uh, let's talk a little bit about Dimitri Peterman, because I love this guy. And let's talk about MHAA and, and our uh, association with the, uh, with the, with the Dolly's uh, Team Project. D Dimitri Peterman is is uh, one of our board of directors, and um, he's uh, we we formed a joint venture agreement um, with him to display uh, what can only be characterized as a remarkable uh, uh, collection of uh, art by Salvador Dali. 
Salvador Dali was, uh, as, as many people know, was a remarkably famous um, a Spanish artist uh, in the 20s and 30s and the 40s, uh, and well into the 1970s. Um, he um, uh, was well known for all of, of his surreal art, uh, and he, and he uh, created art in, in a variety of, of, of ways. Um, Dimitri was, uh, has been successful in collecting a remarkable uh, uh, number of, of paintings and sculptures. Uh, of, of, uh, art that Dali created in a variety of mediums and has been kind enough to work with the Monterey History and Art Association so that that exhibit, now known as Dali 17, uh, can be and will continue to be ex uh, displayed at our Museum of Monterey, uh, right next to the uh, to Fisherman's Wharf. It's a, it's, a, it's a real coup for the Monterey Peninsula. Uh, uh, Salvador Dali was here in the 1940s. Um, he, um, he got out of Spain during World War II um, and actually got out um, uh, when, the, when the fascists took over Spain um, and came here. And so the collection that we have here on the Bo Monterey Peninsula is the second largest collection of Dali art in the Western Hemisphere. Um, and it is, uh, although it has been a long time coming, it is an exhibit that is world class and well worth seeing. So that's a, it's 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 both a cap in the feather for Dimitri, a cap in the feather uh, for history and art. Oh, it's a, and, it's uh, been a wonderful it's been a wonderful collaboration between someone who's willing to commit his time to serving on the board of directors and also who's had a remarkable collection that now um, is open to the public. And um, th these works of art have up until they were um, moved into our museum. Uh, had never been collectively displayed outside of Europe. Uh, there had been two um, significant uh, showings of, of his collection, one in Belgium and one in Spain. But other than those two events, they had never been seen uh, outside of Europe, and they certainly had never been seen in uh, the United States before. And so when people come and visit the Museum of Monterey to see the Dali 17 collection, they're going to see something that's not only rare and special, but for us, it's really unique. Yeah, it's it's a it's a great thing. It is. And uh, ag again, uh, so with the MHA, just to uh, round up, uh, how do people, if they're if they're interested, how do they contact us? We we have a website. Okay. Uh, we, we've got actually we've got a couple of websites on a Facebook page, and if you Google Monterey History and Art Association, uh, you can find us. Um, and uh, there's a contact information on our website, and I would strongly recommend anyone interested in uh, participating with us or joining uh, to, to contact us through our website. Additionally, we are always looking for volunteers. Besides the Museum of Monterey uh, uh, Dali 17 exhibition, we own, as I indicated earlier, a number of um, of historic adobes, um, Casa Serrano, the Dodd House, um, uh, the Mayo Hayes O'Donnell Library, uh, all of those properties that we have uh, have docents, and every one of them needs to have uh, help from volunteers. Okay, you heard it. I want to thank you. I'm Mark Baer. Uh, my guest, Mark Vilpiero. You're watching the Your Town Television program, and we'll be back.